Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. What's going on guys and welcome to my latest ranking of the Hellraiser franchise. The brand new Hellraiser reboot drops on Hulu today, so be sure you check it out. I was lucky enough to check this out a little over a week ago at Fantastic Fest and was a big fan of it. So now we have 11 Hellraiser movies to talk about. And a lot of these were first time watches for me last year when I reviewed every single one of these. So if you want more in-depth thoughts on any of these 11 films, I have reviews for every single one of them and I'll drop that playlist link up here for you to check out. Now, as far as this franchise, never been the biggest fan of Hellraiser. There's certainly some really good movies at the top of this list, but it's one of those horror franchises I think that has had the biggest struggle throughout its entire lifetime. A handful of these movies were never intended to be Hellraiser films and was reworked in the script phasing to kind of throw Pinhead into a few pages, and so we got a large variety of quality on this list. But as far as the bottom of the barrel, in my personal opinion, number 11 for me is gonna be Hellraiser Inferno. Now, I'm a big fan of Scott Derrickson. I like a lot of his later work. This was his directorial debut, and you could see a lot of his early promise here, especially in the visuals. That is the best thing about this movie. It's very much like Silent Hill as far as the atmosphere and as far as some of the creature designs. And I can understand why a lot of people have this movie much higher. I don't think it's a very popular pick to have this as the worst of this franchise, but for me personally, I just really hate the main character of this film. I think he's a despicable character. He's a shitty person. He's somebody that you do not enjoy following whatsoever. You don't root for him. You don't care about anything that happens to him. And it's such a dark and dreary and miserable movie because of the themes that are pretty continuous throughout Hellraiser that it's just not an enjoyable film to watch. So while on paper, there's much more artistic merit going on in this movie than some of the films I have above it, I just did not enjoy watching Hellraiser Inferno for a single second. And both of the twists at the end regarding James Remar and the fate of the main character I thought was obvious and I saw them coming almost 15 minutes into the movie. So, not for me. Number 10 is going to be Hellraiser Hellseeker. Now this is basically the same exact movie as Hellraiser Inferno and you can pretty much attach a lot of what I just said about that film to this one. You get a main character that's a giant pussy hound and he's cheating on his wife who is Kirsty Cotton and every single female he comes in contact with wants to fuck him and all the while you have pinhead and cenobites and these visions coming along. And so it's the same exact experience. It's the same exact negatives where you have this character that is a shitbag. You don't like following him. It's a movie that's just bathed in all that hell atmosphere. And the only tiny little nugget of a positive that brings this just slightly above my number 11 is that you do get Kirsty Cotton in here. And the third act twist regarding her character I thought was fairly well handled. Certainly not enough of her in this movie, and it's certainly too little too late by the time she does come around, but that is the one moment of this movie I do enjoy, whereas my 11, really none of those moments. Number nine is gonna be Hellraiser Revelations, probably the most popular pick for worst of the bunch in this franchise, for reasons that I understand, because this is by far the cheapest looking of all these movies. It's a well-known fact that they cobbled this thing together, rushed it into production just to hang on to the rights of the franchise, and so there was really not a whole lot of artistic drive to make this. It was just, let's throw some Hellraiser shit together, and they used about 10 bucks to make all of the makeup effects, because Pinhead, the Cenobites, uh, they look terrible. The actor that played Pinhead here, who is the first person to take over since Doug Bradley. I don't necessarily blame him, but he is a terrible choice to replace Doug Bradley. Uh, there's a lot of memes out there about like the great value version of Pinhead. But where this movie has merit that I think a lot of people don't tend to give credit where credit is due is that this is the first movie since like the first two that genuinely feels like a Hellraiser movie. They tried to get back to that original style, that original storyline, and a lot of those original themes. The gore is really nasty and is fairly effective for how shitty the other makeup and production value is in the film. And so while this is 
a movie that is certainly kind of a dumpster fire as far as the production value. I actually liked some of the story ideas they were going for, so I didn't hate it as much as everybody else. Number eight is going to be Hellraiser Deader. Just like my number 11 and number 10, this is yet another one of those films that started as something else, and then they threw Pinhead into page 18, 45, and 112 and called it a Hellraiser film. You got this investigative reporter that's going off and trying to investigate these cults that are killing people and reanimating their body in some kind of a, a weird ritual. And so she's investigating these cults, investigating this like zombie process that they're doing, and eventually the Cenobites are risen in the third act and it becomes a Hellraiser movie kind of artificially. Now where I like this more than the other two is that I think that the lead character here and the lead actress is significantly better and significantly easier to follow than the characters in my bottom two, but it's the same story as far as you're watching a generic 2000s like mystery thriller investigation movie that just happens to have Pinhead in there. Pinhead is by far the most mishandled and underused horror icon in existence. Number seven is gonna be Hellraiser Judgment. Now, previous to today's new reboot release, this was the most recent Hellraiser film, and I actually did watch this one on release because a lot of people were praising it, saying that it was the most Hellraiser film that they've seen in years, and I watched it, 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 it's fine. I've seen it twice at this point. I like the fact that this movie tries to add to the lore of like the hell dimensions and the Cenobites. You've got the auditor character that comes in here and there's this whole storyline and lore built into judging somebody for their sins and this dude that like, you write all the sins on a piece of paper and he eats it and vomits out all your sins. It, it's really disgusting and like, I think if I remember correctly, when I was reviewing the film, I was actually verbally trying to explain what happened and I almost threw up in my mouth because it was just so horrendously disgusting. But I appreciate the fact they tried to do something creative and different besides just throwing Pinhead in. But this movie also makes the same exact mistake as almost half of this franchise, is that it, even though it was written and conceived to be a Hellraiser film this time, it doesn't feel like a Hellraiser film because it's just a generic ripoff of Seven, where you got this detective going around to all of these murder scenes that seem to have like a biblical theme, and then there's Hell Cenobite shit going on in the background, and the final reveals in the third act, again, blatantly obvious, just like an in Inferno and Hellseeker, and so while they certainly get a little bit more credit for trying something new, and the guy that took over for Doug Bradley and the Great Value Dude is significantly better than the Great Value Dude, and the, make, the makeup and the prosthetics and everything on the Cenobites and the Auditor looks much better, it's still a movie that I have zero interest in ever watching again. Number six is gonna be Hellraiser Hellworld. Now this is another one that I think is very popular for bottom of the list, and I'll actually say from here on up, these are movies that I would not mind re-watching all the way up to the top two that I genuinely think are great horror films. Now Hellworld is a terrible Hellraiser film. It has no business calling itself a Hellraiser film. It is possibly the most artificial of any of the movies on this list as far as putting Pinhead and the Cenobites into a story where he does not belong. But with that being said, the movie that it actually is is a very schlocky, goofy, 2000s horror flick with some strange star power in here with like Henry Cavill and Lance Henriksen. And I actually halfway enjoy it for how shitty it is. It's one of those movies, it's just like Hell Halloween Resurrection for as terrible as it is, if you just watch it as this schlocky 2000s kind of snapshot in time of that era of horror, there's some appeal there, and so I halfway enjoyed watching this, and I would not really struggle all that much to watch it again. Number five is going to be Hellraiser Bloodline. Now, believe it or not, I actually saw this in theaters when I was a kid. It was the first Hellraiser movie I ever saw, and for a long time, it was the only Hellraiser movie I ever saw. Uh, Rewatching it, I think it's got some good ideas here. For all of the jokes we make about the horror film franchise going into space, I think this is one of the few times where they kind of make sense of that concept. And I like the fact that it tries to give you three different eras, all uh, centered on like one lineage, one bloodline, and showing the creation of the Lament configuration and trying to have this family, this bloodline, take out the Cenobites. I think it's a good idea, but I think that the very first act of the film, like the 1700s, that period piece section, is the most interesting section of the movie. So it gets less interesting as it goes along. You still got some good creature effects and gore here. I like the one where the dude's heads get smashed and twisted together. And there's some good Hellraiser type stuff in here. This is the last movie that still felt 
kind of like it was supposed to be a Hellraiser flick. But unfortunately, it's just one that I think gets less appealing and less interesting as the movie goes along. Number four is going to be Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Now this one seems to be a fan favorite to where I almost see more people say this one is their favorite of the franchise than the original, which is interesting to me. Now there's a lot of things in this movie that I enjoy, that I get the appeal of. I like the fact that they kind of expand the lore more into the Leviathan and what the hell dimension actually looks like and add a little bit more explanation and lore to Pinhead and the Cenobites. I like Kirsty Cotton coming back. I like Julia coming back and taking kind of the lead villain role away from Frank. There is a, a lot of good makeup and gore effects in this movie. It really does feel like a good companion piece to that first film. But for me, it's just a bit too weird. This gets away from kind of the scary, dark, twisted side of Hellraiser and goes more into the weird, wacky, goofy side of Hellraiser with the, the Dr. Leviathan thing and him taking out the Cenobites all in one final swoop, which to me was kind of an insult to the Cenobites and a few other elements in here that are just a bit too strange for my personal taste, but I still like it. I understand why a lot of people prefer this one, the, the crazier, the more lore filled film in the first two Hellraisers. Number three is gonna be Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Now this to me is the most fun of the Hellraiser franchise, which is not a word I would describe pretty much any other movie but this one in this franchise. So it's more of a trashy slasher take on Hellraiser. The Cenobites are more of like slasher villains. The whole third act is just carnage candy and kills and creature designs. And so I could understand somebody being turned off and disappointed by that and liking more the cerebral side of Hellraiser, but I actually have a pretty good time with this movie. It's not the best quality. There's certainly some shit acting in here. There's not the best story in the world. Pinhead is stuck in this little tower thing and needs sacrifices and then just carnage ensues for the third act. But if I'm in the mood for a Hellraiser film and I don't want it to be quite so heady, I just want to turn my brain off and enjoy it, this is absolutely the one I'm going to grab because... The CD killer, Cenobite, I don't know the actual name for him, is just a hilarious design. The whole nightclub massacre is like a Hellraiser version of Carrie. And the way that the third act just seems to keep going and keep going and keep going, while frustrating is still strangely entertaining for just how ambitious they were trying to be with the third act of this film. Uh, you get a great soundtrack. I mean, you got Lemmy in here. Hellraiser! I enjoy this one. Coming in at number two is the brand new film Hellraiser that's debuting today on Hulu. And like I said in the intro, I was lucky enough to check this out at Fantastic Fest. It was the second secret screening of that festival, and I had a damn good time with this movie. Obviously, because of where it's placed on this list, I think this is the best Hellraiser film since the original. And for me, I think that it's the Hellraiser film, even over the original, that utilizes the Cenobites in a way that I personally enjoy. Now, I know the original novel had them as secondary villains and had them in the background just like the original film did, but... After that original film, for as great as it is, after that, the franchise just felt like it never really could figure out what to do with the Cenobites or what to do with Pinhead, and they were always just like tossed around as, a, I don't know what to fucking do with them, just throw them in page eight. And this film finally felt like a story where the Cenobites and Pinhead and the Lament configuration and their looming threat and the eventual confrontation with the Cenobites is the point. It's the star of the show, it's the focal point of the plot of the film. And to me, that was a gigantic breath of fresh air to finally have a Hellraiser film that actually focuses on its poster child villain. What a fucking concept, right? So you have some characters in here. You have the main character who is struggling with drug addiction. She gets a hold of the Lament configuration. And in this, the box has like different configurations, different little forms. And each time it has a new form, it requires a human sacrifice and eventually is going to lead to something happening in the third act whenever it reveals its final confrontation. And so essentially you have this main character that is getting tricked and lured by the Cenobites and some other forces into giving human sacrifices to this box and satisfying the Cenobites. And so to me, it was a very entertaining story and the most refreshing Hellraiser story that I've seen since the original film. I think that all of the practical effects and the gore and especially the creature effects is top fucking notch. Even the effects that they use to kind of shift the world into the, the hell dimension where walls shift and the floor drops out, I thought was really convincing. Even if there was some CGI, I couldn't immediately tell, which is the best version of CGI. I think that Jamie Clayton 
was awesome as this new pinhead by a landslide, the best pinhead that we have had aside from uh, Doug Bradley, and she just makes it her own. And I really loved the creature design on all the other Cenobites too. So this is a film that I really dug. I really enjoyed it. I was pleasantly surprised with how good it is. And I hope it succeeds because I want to see more movies in this new version of Hellraiser. But at number one, I still have the original Hellraiser. While never necessarily being one of my favorites of all time, not a movie that is a classic for me personally, I still think it's the best in this franchise by a nose. You know, I really like this new one at number two. But the first one, aside from just the legacy appreciation of it started at all and recognizing the impact that it had back in the 80s when it came out I still think that there's some elements to that first film that is going to stand the test of time a little bit better than this new film probably will uh, Doug Bradley as Pinhead obviously a horror icon I think that Frank and Julia are really effective villains the fact that they're the central villains too that's a good thing to have so we're not sitting there craving the Cenobites the whole movie Kirsty Cotton, good character, never been one of my favorite final girls, never felt like Hellraiser in general has had like this great, strong, central protagonist character. I know some people don't like that, they think Kirsty Cotton is that. Me personally, never quite been that character for me, but she's good, she's effective enough in this first film. A lot of the gore effects and the practical effects on the hooks and the meat and the everything is pretty gnarly very wild ideas and direction by Clive Barker and it's a film that just unfolds in this really unsettling and unpredictable way the first time that you watch it that I understand why this is a classic for many people maybe if I grew up watching it more often it would be a classic for me but it's been one of those movies that while I really enjoy it and I appreciate the hell out of it just never quite been one of those mainstays that I have to rewatch all that often but if I am going to watch a Hellraiser film this is the one that I'm probably going to grab most often. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed this, please click over here for the playlist of all of my Hellraiser reviews, all 11 of them. And I'm also going to put my top 50 horror films up here if you do want to see some movies that I would consider classics. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.